We are rolling. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. Today we have Jason Marnoka on the podcast. He is the voice of Omen in the video game Valorant, and I'm super excited to talk to him. How are you doing today? You know what? I'm doing okay. I'm glad to uh, glad to be here, for one thing. I always like talking about Valorant, and uh, uh, you know, it's not as hot today as it could be here in the <laughs> LA area, so I'll take that as a win in the summertime when I can. <laughs> Yeah, so you, uh, I, I kind of want to get th- through the beginning of your voice acting career before we get to anything of, of the Valorant side. What, what was that introduction and why? What was like that first project or first idea that you had for voice acting? Gosh, um... I think honestly that started around high school because as a kid, um, as a lot of voice actors will probably tell you, uh, I, I used to do, um, you know, impressions and things like that when I was younger. Um, and then, uh, from I, I used to have a micro cassette recorder, um, which, which certainly dates me, but, um, I used to have one of those that I would, uh, either record my own stuff in, or sometimes I would actually like set it up next to a TV speaker and record a bit of a show or something and then like redub my own voice into it just by a lot of clicking and rewinding and stopping and clicking Mm -hmm. and rewinding and stopping um doing an impression of the character or my own interpretation or whatever just to kind of play around with the voice because i had always been uh interested in acting i had done theater stuff and things like that but um voiceover was always mysterious to me because you know, I didn't quite understand the process. I knew that obviously an actor had to be doing that, but I didn't really at the time know how it was done. So uh, I was, I was always curious about that. And then around high school, a few friends were like, you know, Hey, you should try and maybe pursue this. I'm like, Oh, that's not a bad idea, I suppose. And so, um, you know, I I sort of started dabbling in, you know, figuring out mic equipments and things like that. And uh, uh, since it had started to become more widely available and easier to, you know, grab a mic and have a computer and stuff. Um, so then from there, I mean, I, I ended up going to uh, college initially for screenwriting. Um, and so voiceover was kind of still a hobby thing. Uh, so I kind of put like the acting aside to try and do screenwriting because I love writing as well. But as that went on, I was like, you know what, I may switch over to the theater department, which I did. And then at that point, a couple of my friends were in the radio department. They're like, dude, you got to get over here. They have like voiceover courses and stuff. Um, I'm like, ooh, okay, all right. And so upon hopping over there and uh, trying out some of the stuff as like, you know, I was still in the theater department, but I still did some radio stuff on the side. And I was like, oh, man, this is great. I don't have to memorize scripts anymore. Oh, damn. You know, <laughs> this is it. Like, because memorizing scripts is, it's, it's not something I consider super hard, but it definitely is time consuming and is uh you know that sometimes you get too stuck on like the one way you read that line and stuff like that and uh so i was uh very delighted that like oh voiceover you just get the script and you go and you don't have to put on makeup or get fitted for a costume or any of that stuff you don't have to take it off at the end of the night you know like like theater and film and stuff so uh that actually got me way more interested in voiceover and uh after a little bit of time, I uh, ended up getting connected with uh, some folks who were, uh, you know, producing stuff. The first thing I really did super professionally was, uh, uh, oh gosh, what? It's uh, There was a video game called Apotheon, uh, mm-hmm. which was, um, yeah, and it was uh, uh, a game that was available on Steam, I believe, and it was uh, uh, like, it, it was an ancient Greek themed thing, and it actually was fabulous because all of the art looked like ancient Greek pottery. Yeah. So, it, you know, everything like had really stylized. So I loved that. I played uh, Poseidon, which was like the second to last boss. So, um, so that was really fun. And that really got me more into, especially video game voiceover that got me more into it. And then from there, I branched into anime and things like that. A lot of voiceover is a lot about like the people, you know, and yeah. how you, you know, build those relationships as long as you're not a dick you know and things like that <laughs> the general rule of thumb in live yeah. and in voiceover don't be crucial, crucial. Um, yeah so you know from there it uh, just kind of built up and i'm grateful to be able to have a, a bit of a career out of it at this point uh if i'm not mistaken you worked on or at least from what i saw uh world of warcraft 
correct? Yes, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was in the last uh, uh, couple of years. Yeah, I was, um, I was uh, uh, the voice of Prince Renathol in Shadowlands, <laughs> and he is, um, he's a, essentially a vampire, um, a venthyr, which is, uh, I, I had no real experience with World of Warcraft, so I didn't really know what it was about. Um, mm -hmm. I know I had auditioned for uh, it's some other character, but then the character of Prince Renathal came up and they actually cast me as that based on my other audition. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been really fun. I like the uh, the World of Warcraft people are really cool and uh, super chill and um, they make some great memes. So <laughs> I'm delighted. To, and I got to cross like playing a vampire off my list. So that's I, very I cool. can call that a win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think I just thought it was super interesting. Like just going through what you've been in, like it ticks so many boxes for so many people like for me at least when when i put this out it's going to be able to be like consumed by so many people like you have a wide variety of like you did smite right mm -hmm, yep. uh loki in that yeah i was the uh <clears throat> one of the i i play some variant skins for some of the characters okay. so i did uh, the headless Norseman Loki, which was like a, a sort of Halloween themed headless horseman version of Loki, um, even though he doesn't have a horse. But I mean, I was just happy to be able to do it because um, for that they wanted like, you know, kind of a, a giggly, gleeful, maniacal thing, which I was happy to do because I don't get those kind of roles very often. Um, so that was fun. I did uh, uh, Vulcan, uh, Full Metal Vulcan, which was like uh, just sort of a military sergeant version of, of uh, Vulcan. Uh, I did uh, uh, Jean Cui, uh, Stitched Horror Jean Cui, which is sort of a, I think I'm pronouncing that right, um, which was sort of sort of like Oogie Boogie, I guess, from Nightmare Before Christmas is what he always looked like to me. <laughs> um, and then I did uh, a version of Poseidon that was kind of like a sort of a Jason Momoa-esque looking version of Poseidon, which I thought was pretty rad, except he had terrible puns and it was great. <laughs> I, those scripts are always like funnier than I would have thought going in because it kind of <laughs> seems like an intense game, but it actually seems pretty fun. So I'm, I'm just delighted to get to come in and do stuff like that. Yeah, that's what, like in my house, that's what people play is Smite. Like my brother plays ah. Smite all the time. I'm pretty sure they're playing like as we speak. So... I think I just thought it was super cool that I'm like, yeah, I got to talk to someone who was in Smite. But well, yeah, Smite's fun. I and that's a great group of folks too. Like we mm -hmm. always have fun in the booth. Mm -hmm. And then also more recently, uh, Transformers. Yes, yeah, yeah that yeah, one is yeah. super exciting. Yeah, uh, Transformers has been has been great because um, I did uh, uh, the Prime Wars trilogy initially, which was like. Combiner Wars, Titans Return, and Power of the Primes. So I played Megatron for those three. And then uh, later on, more recently, we had the Netflix show War for Cybertron, in which I came back to play Megatron. Um, and that ends up being really, really fun because you get to just be as as much of a warlord as you want to be. And it's just, you know, doing this for hours and whatnot. And um, it's, it's fun. Uh, I, I, like, uh, I like playing Megatron because I, I grew up not really watching much Transformers. I just wasn't super into it. I wasn't into Transformers or Power Rangers, so I don't know how I had friends. But, um, <laughs> I, but upon doing the shows, I, I came to really appreciate like the lore of it mm -hmm. and the character and all of that. So I'm, I'm really pleased and chuffed to be uh, among the because there's a, a good chunk of amazing actors who played Megatron, so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm delighted to to be one of those actors who's, who's gotten to play that role. It's been fun. Yeah, upon doing research on on it, I came across a video of... Uh, I'm not exactly sure you probably know who like played Megatron before, but there was there was a side-by-side -side of like the old uh, Megatron and then you, and mm. I, I don't know. I was super impressed like the fact that, I mean you get you probably get a lot of these roles where it's like super like deeper toned voice but you're extremely talented like extremely extremely talented i know you probably don't need to hear it from me but i just want to say that no, i'm always humbled to hear that i appreciate it that, that always that always that makes my day that people people like my work so i'm i'm I, i'm very bad at taking compliments so i'm trying to get better <laughs> at just being like thank you you know i'm trying yeah. to get better at that um but yeah like uh gosh they've had Frank Welker is the original Megatron, which, you know, Frank Welker, you know, um, all, all hail to him. He's, he's fantastic in everything for forever. Um, <laughs> Corey, Corey Burton, I know, played Megatron. Uh, 
David K plays the Beast Wars Megatron in in Beast Wars, and then uh, got, yeah, there's there's a ton of like amazing like huge names in voiceover that that, mm-hmm. uh, that have played Megatron. So it was it was fun to be able to step into those those shoes for a little bit. Yeah, when it comes to something that's like already established, like Megatron, is there a sense of like fear at, or like almost maybe like i don't want to say fear but like you you kind of gotta do it in a way especially when you have people who you know you probably think are incredible voice actors who played megatron before you like do right by the character in a way like is there a sense of that yeah i mean there is there's um there's especially uh characters like that we usually refer to as legacy characters yeah um and uh that sort of thing is definitely like you know that there's i don't know if it's fear exactly but you, so you're right about that i don't know if it's fear but it's um there's a sense of duty to it to an extent yeah. where you know you want to try and do as right by the character as you can because you know of course we have directors and creative consultants and stuff who might want you to do this other thing and whatever but you know you try to uh, uh keep at least in the spirit of the character as much as you can um, and especially with something like Megatron, you know, it, what was interesting was that when I got that audition, I didn't actually have uh, any real concept in mind for what Megatron might sound like because I didn't really watch the show or I didn't see the movies mm-hmm. um, or anything like that because I just wasn't super into Transformers. So, um, you know, when we were sort of de- when I was developing the voice for the audition, it was just this thing just down here and he had large teeth and things like that and just a very like a rumbling engine i thought like he sees this machine um so i did that for the audition and thankfully uh uh in order to probably save my voice and to give the character a little bit of nuance um what we ended up doing was we actually made the voice it sits here but then when he emphasizes something it goes down there and then it comes back out again so we kind of did this sort of ebbing and flowing thing with the voice, which ended up being uh, uh, more fun for emphasis because it is a little hard to emphasize stuff when you just sound way down here. <laughs> like it's kind of hard to, you know, uh, do things like that. So, mm-hmm. but that ended up being, uh, it did feel like a bit of an incredible responsibility to uh, yeah. play him. Because the first time I played him in the Prime Wars trilogy, he's kind of retired Megatron. The fans ended up referring to him as Sassy Megatron because he just didn't care anymore. <laughs> the war was over. He and Optimus were banished. So he was Megatron was just hanging out on this planet in this arena like anyone who comes in can challenge him to a fight and he just likes to beat people up. <laughs> so he's, you know, just got this swagger to him and it was really fun to play. Uh, I think the fans were probably confused about that at first, but then they really came to like it, which was delightful to me because I had a lot of fun playing you know megatron being snarky at everyone which is great <laughs> um because apparently when megatron retires he just doesn't care anymore um so that was great and then with war for cybertron we uh got to do you know wartime megatron which was way more serious and grounded mm-hmm. and angry and but also like we, we got to weave some nuance in there too where he's uh you know a little conflicted about some of the methods of uh victory and things like that so it was it was it was an interesting i got to play kind of two different sides of the character which was really fun over the course of those uh those six shows so yeah when you say you you're developing a voice like for that what what is that like process actually like for someone who you know not a lot of people hear about someone developing a voice they just obviously see the final product what Mm -hmm. what goes into developing a voice is it like looking or doing research or uh sometimes it it depends um with megatron for example um uh the first thing that uh, the the image that we were given because sometimes you're usually Mm -hmm. you know you're you're given an image with the audition sides like a picture of the character um and megatron had uh a bunch of battle wounds on him in that show his uh, decepticon logo is like scraped off halfway he's got a big scar down his face um so you know you think about he's the he's he's big so he's got to be like down here at least and he's he's got if he turns into a tank he's got to have a great engine so if he's got this engine then it's got to be down here and this and you know he's got these big teeth that he's glaring with and stuff so he's got to have these big teeth and things like that so you just sort of look at individual pieces of the character and uh uh go from there um but for another example is uh 
in the video game Disgaea 6, I play the character Cerberus, and one of his um, uh, incarnations is uh, this very kind of half-lidded, one uh, like very skeptical looking glasses down here kind of uh character and so that ends up just being like clearly his voice is more you know in his nose or whatever and things like you know so i auditioned with that kind of thing we sort of changed it as we went but you know you, you base it on visual cues sometimes descriptions because the the character may be you know usually they'll say like male late 30s or whatever not usually in my case usually <laughs> the characters are much older than that but um you know but you know, things like that mid 50s you know big imposing british you know whatever they whatever it might be um there are usually some specs to it sometimes there's a vocal reference as well if they're like we kind of want it to sound like this um actually a couple of uh, my characters end up being included in uh, uh vocal refs for stuff that i get and i'm like oh that's funny <laughs> <laughs> but i think i can manage that uh, but yeah so you know you, you just build it on the information you have and uh you know go forward from there usually if you audition with something that's at least close to what they wanted, both performance-wise and vocally, um, then you can sort of reconstruct it from there. Because I've mm -hmm. been in stuff where, uh, uh, like, there's an anime Megalobox, um, which I adore, um, and it's been a great thing to be a part of. But when I auditioned for the character of Coach Nanbu, who is this sort of larger, one-eyed, gruff guy, and so I auditioned with him, and he sounded kind of like this, and he was a little, little, you know, New York, whatever, like he was this thing here. And <clears throat> when I sent in that audition, they were like, that's great. Can we lose a little bit of the sort of New York thing, <laughs> that, that whatever you're doing? I'm like, uh, sure. So, you know, then we sort of toned it down, and it was a lot less, and it just sounded kind of like this, and then that was fine and easier to maintain, and it was a little less, you know, bada-bing and stuff. So... Yeah, so it, you just build it over time based on both input and the information that uh, you get from the audition. That's a very long-winded way of answering that question. <laughs> <laughs> I, pr I appreciate the, the long question. Mm -hmm. uh, as, you, um, as we move in towards Valorant, let's talk uh, kind of that audition process. You, uh, From what I gather, most people went in. Did you get a picture of Omen? Yes, I had a, uh, that was before he had the three slashes down his face. He just had the two little beady eyes. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, he, he essentially looked the same. Um, my memory was that his code name was Wraith at the time. Oh, really? Um, that's my memory of it, but I may be wrong. I may be mixing <laughs> it up with stuff. Um, but yeah, so I, I got that audition. And out of all of the Valorant characters, that was the one where I, because I auditioned for a few more, but that was the one where I was like, ooh, yes. Oh, ooh. spooky. Are we, are we allowed to talk about which ones you auditioned for? I mean, probably. I, I auditioned for most of the guys. Um, I auditioned for Brimstone. I auditioned for uh, uh, Cypher. I auditioned for, you know, whatever. Because I didn't, I didn't, uh, no, wait, I don't think I auditioned for Cypher. No, I didn't audition for Cypher because they didn't, I don't think they gave him to me because they wanted specifically like regional stuff. Okay. But I know I auditioned for Brimstone because he's also um, in the, they didn't have a specific dialect picked out for him. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so I know I auditioned for Brimstone, um, which, you know, uh, Steve Bloom. You don't get better than yeah. him, so obviously, I mean... you know, you got to have Steve Bloom in there. Yeah. Um, what a joy he is. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so I, I mostly, but I zeroed in on Omen because I really, really liked his spooky design and stuff. And I remember, um, I think part of what got me in was the uh, the ability to do that very ethereal, spooky thing. But then also um, for the uh, like you know you have to do some effort noises usually in auditions you have to do some you know like getting hit or striking and stuff like yeah. that and for one of my like death noises i know i was like no! you know whatever like <laughs> like weird um, excuse me, weird gaspy like <laughs> noises and shit like that um so i think that was part of what uh what people liked in my audition was like you're just mm -hmm. making weird noises <laughs> and I love it because he's this you know smoky shadowy weird guy Mm -hmm. So I think I think people dug that, which was um, delightful. And then, you know, so I, I got a callback for that, which is a chunk of actors that they like. They'll bring yeah. into the studio and, you know, review mm -hmm. um, and have them sort of do it again with direction. And uh, so I was there with uh, a few other uh, voice actors and, um, you know, we're all just sort of chatting in the lobby and then just going in one by one. And then, uh, yeah, eventually they uh, got back to me and uh, I, I got Omen. And I was chuffed because walking out of there, you know, there were some really awesome guys in, in line to do, to, 
for callbacks. So as I was leaving, I was like, well, I'll never see that again. <laughs> you know, like that was fun, but good day, everyone. I'm sure you're going to pick one of the amazing <laughs> folks who were in there. Um, so, you know, they were good enough to, to pick me, which uh, uh, was extremely flattering because I, I, I just sort of assumed, you know, I'll go in and do the best I can, but we'll see what happens. I don't, I don't, because uh, one of the tricks with auditioning for stuff is the general rule of thumb is not to want it too much because then, you know, nine mm -hmm. times out of 10, you're going to get it because that's just the nature of the business. Um, so if you want it too badly, one, you can kind of hear it. And two, when you probably won't get it, then it can be detrimental to like, you know, your own sense of self and things like that. So yeah. generally you want to go in and, and granted, you know, I've done stuff where I wanted it real bad. So, you know, on occasion I've uh, uh, done that myself. So, you know, it's, it's, it's just tricky sometimes to try and try and leave that at the door. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, Omen's been uh, a lot of fun for me. I've, I've really enjoyed it. I still haven't played Valorant, but uh, <laughs> I do enjoy playing the character. <laughs> when it comes to uh, a game like Valorant, where it's not it's not like you're coming in to add a character, like it's not already out yet. You're a part of the original, uh, like like maybe if they ha add characters now. Like, they might have someone come in and have a reference, like, hey, this is what Valorant is. This mm. is other work. But you, you're you part of the original game launch. Mm -hmm. and So you don't have much to go off of when it comes to, like, what they're even able to tell you, right? Yeah, you mean, like, lore stuff or, like, well, the yeah. characters and everything? So yeah. a lot of this is up to your um, interpretation of, you know what he sounds like or what he's going to be doing and who he is as a character uh what was that initial interpretation for you when you when you see the picture like what what is he like to you um the initial you know i the interesting thing about omen that uh, you know sometimes people message me on twitter and whatnot asking for like omen lore stuff and i'm like guys i have no idea you know, like, I, I, I have no real information on that. Like, you know, Riot's keeping it very hush-hush. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, I, I only know what we can go off of from, uh, you know, what we know, which is that from some of the lines in the game and stuff, you know, he has to he has to hold himself together. You know, like, this is uncomfortable. It hurts. It's difficult to concentrate and all this. Stuff. So I guess that's where I came from for, uh, with it was that he's this, you know, it, 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 existence is a torment but he's he's trying to exist long enough to maybe get back to whatever he was before or whatever you know like those are kind of the kind of things that i was trying to trying to channel was just that uh, there's this pain with you know it's, it's difficult to just be mm -hmm. with him which was which was you know kind of a cosmic thing to play with it was it was interesting but uh yeah so i guess that's that's pretty much what i dove into and in, <clears throat> excuse me and uh, auditioned with uh, th that I liked so much within the audition itself was that he seemed to be this this tormented character and as someone who enjoys a lot of like gothic literature you know Dracula and the Phantom of the Opera and things like that I you know the, the tortured character the tortured dark character is, is fun for me so <laughs> so I was I was delighted to kind of bring a little bit of that into the role from uh, from what I you know understood of him going in and I suppose what I understand of him now, because I still really don't know very much about Omen other than what we have, like, contextually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's, like, super interesting about, like, these games that have... I, di I didn't realize till now, I'm going to backtrack a little bit, I didn't realize till now that there really isn't a lot on Omen. No. So uh, that's a lot of, you know, interpretation of... I guess you can you know, leave it up for interpretation, but at the same time, like, I wonder, I wonder what's going to happen if they're going to. I do too. I mean, I hope that we get some more look. Cause again, like ladies and gentlemen, this is all strictly my interpretation and understanding of it. Yeah. This is, I am not speaking on behalf of <laughs> the mm. game company or anything like that. But yeah. I mean, I also, just what I gathered. So I also realize that a lot that like when people ask the voice actor, like, Hey, what's, what's going to happen or anything like speaking to Miranda, she's like, it's not that I like signed any NDAs. I just genuinely just don't know. 
Like, yeah. I yeah. mean, I, I'm sure there was some, you know, contract or NDA or something like that, but most of it is just, I don't know. You know, I yeah, really don't know. A lot of know. it is, you know, they, they, they only share certain things that are required per session with the voice actors, which mm -hmm. is, you know, their way of keeping stuff under wraps because, mm -hmm. you know, you don't want anybody talking or anything like that. But, um, yeah, with, uh, with this kind of thing especially, like, I... <sighs> And I actually, I ran into this with Transformers a lot, too, because people would ask me for, like, spoilers on that. And I'm like, guys, I don't know. Because my thing is, I'm like an NDA's, like, I, I'm some sort of dream player for NDA's. Because when I go in and record something and leave, I don't remember anything about it. Because I just, it, voiceover, I'm so used to, you know, you go in at 2 o'clock, you do the thing for two hours, and then you go on to the next gig. And so you just have to kind of remain... Mm -hmm in a fairly constant state of motion so you don't really uh, at least i don't have time to you know or the the brain space i guess to uh uh really log away like everything that happened and stuff yeah. so it's kind of fun that way because then when the season eventually comes out or the game eventually comes out it's like it's fresh i'm like oh okay so that's what i meant when i was saying this line to this or whatever you know or mm -hmm. oh that's where that led to you know like it's like i'm seeing it for the first time too so i'm you know it's kind of kind of a good thing i guess that like if people want spoilers i couldn't give them to you if i wanted to like i i don't know <laughs> do you ever watch your own stuff um yeah i i think it's uh it's kind of a i think brian blessed once said that it was it was kind of a false modesty that actors don't watch their own stuff um but uh <laughs> which obviously is a generalization and meant for the purposes of humor but i i i sometimes do it depends if i'm like in episode 36 for an arc in an anime or something mm -hmm. i may not start at the beginning and watch the whole thing you know <laughs> i may i may look for clips or something like that to put in like a demo reel or things like that but i i may not watch the whole thing transformers i watch the whole thing um <clears throat> because uh frank todaro who plays starscream for us Mm -hmm. um, he and I are really close, so we like to, you know, talk about it, and we had a lot of fun doing Megatron Starscream stuff. So, you know, that I did watch, um, and, you know, so it, it, it depends. Sometimes I, the only thing is I don't play any of the video games. Yeah. I'm just not a gamer. I, uh, after the PS2 came out, that was about the last system I updated, and I'm like, okay, that's it for me. <laughs> these controls, these controls are getting too dang complicated. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. <laughs> So, you know, I kind of gave up on, on console systems, and my uh, my old Mac does not enjoy Steam games, which they don't seem to make from Hex much anymore. Um, yeah. But, yeah, so, you know, so I, I'll dabble. I'll, it depends on the thing. Like, if it's a movie or something like that, like, I'll watch the movie. But if it's something yeah. super long form, like an anime, I may not take the time. It depends. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, I just... Uh, well. I do want a couple voice lines just dabbled in throughout here. Um, sure. I think the obvious one, my personal favorite, is Sage, the life you give. Do you ever wonder where it's taken from? Sage, the life you give. Do you ever wonder where it's taken from? <laughs> uh, I, That's one of my favorites, too. Yeah, I love it. I, I love like it. Do you, do you have any other favorites that you want to um honestly that was it, it's we have a kind of a brainwave thing going on here because that's probably one probably my favorite ultimately but i i know that a lot of people ask for and like um just the little ones like scatter and things mm -hmm. like that i know people really like that one a lot mm -hmm. um and you know different different small ones like that um uh shadows traveling and things like that like i know that they they like just those little ones for some which i think is neat but um yeah i like the more character directed ones like that. yeah I like talking um, to other characters i so i have a i have a thing that i do when i talk to voice actors uh where if you if you are comfortable with doing it if you could say like one of my I, I, my best friend he's a big valorant guy if you could say his name in in the voice of omen and then like just say like scatter afterwards okay his, his name is techie techie yeah techie scatter I love it so much, and it, I always, I'll always clip it, and then like right after this is over, I'll go through, find that clip, and I'll send it to him, and then he'll awesome. just like freak out. I'm like, I'm like the best, best friend of the year. 
<laughs> oh, hey, I mean, hey, if it gets you points, you may as well. Yeah. And I'm happy to do it. I love doing that kind of thing because I, you know, I... I've always loved at conventions and stuff. Before I was really into this business, I liked when voice actors would do that with me. So, you know, it, it's nice to just kind of pay it forward a little bit. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to find other ones that would be... I like. I also enjoy the character uh, director ones. Okay. Sky, yeah. the life weaver. The power to create, to destroy. Which path will you embrace? I wonder. Oh, that's a lot. That one I don't remember. You'd have to drop that in the chat or something. That was long. <laughs> I I can pick, I can pick a different one. I can pick. No, a I mean you can you can do that one. That's fine. But if you just if you just like drop it in the chat, I can just read it. Okay. We, Whatever's easiest. I'm gonna put this one over. Oh, uh, look at you with your fancy. Yeah, there, there fancy. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now this one is newer, so this one I don't remember as much. But I'll I'll just read it in Omen's voice as we have it. All right. <clears throat> Sky, the life weaver, the power to create, to destroy. Which path will you embrace, I wonder? I I just, I, I played a lot of Omen during the beginning. That was the only yeah. character that I played because... Man of taste. Yeah, because, <laughs> because he looked cool. He just looked yeah. so cool. And this I was like, great visual. Yeah. And I was just like, that's my guy. Mm. Like when yeah, the, everybody when I, loves the spooky boy. Yeah. I opened the game. I was like, I don't care what he does. I want him to me. He's kind of like, and I guess, you know, Sage and others are too. But to me, he, he reminds me of like, there was a video game I used to love that was on like, pretty sure it was on the N64. I know it was on the, uh, I, I mostly played it at arcades, but it was called Gauntlet Legends. And that was when I learned that I liked playing spellcaster characters instead of like, you know, warriors and stuff because it was a, you know, a battle game. But I liked shooting magic and stuff. And I guess that's Omen kind of fits into that similar kind of, you know, like shooting shadows and everything and everybody and traveling around and things like that. So I guess he kind of gives me those vibes, which I like a lot. Yeah. Um, but also, I really like Sky. Sky has a great visual and her voice is just fantastic like it's just this whole cast is just spectacular i'm delighted to be among such an awesome group oh, like hopefully just... we all get to do a convention together at some point sky by the way sky loves you too oh bless her heart <laughs> she does she oh. she i'm pretty sure i mean she, i think she's a little bit scared of omen but <sighs> but wise <laughs> but she she really likes you i think oh that's brilliant she's fantastic i adore her she's she's so good and sky just again just has such a great visual and great oh my gosh like all the designs on valorant are just phenomenal i, I think that their design team is just so mm -hmm. so so good because everyone has such a distinct look and they all have like different builds and stuff like that they're all not just the same kind of upside down dorito shaped character you know like they all have different looks to them and different mm -hmm movements and ways of moving like jet i think is hilarious I, I i think jet and phoenix are delightful of course they're sort of the poster children yeah um, and the 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 least spooky i suppose um yeah so i i just love this cast i'm i'm super stoked to be a part of them i love cypher too cypher's great yeah what a great visual with his big hat and everything i love cypher but like i always talk about this the the people i usually talk about it like you and steve and uh, the new character Gabe Kunda uh, on KO. Mm -hmm. You guys like are so like talented and have done stuff for so long, and like just the cast of actual like actual voice actors is just so much talent. And then there's like the hidden gems that like I guess are at the beginning of their uh, voice acting career, like Miranda, who's so extremely talented. And I'm not real sure how much Shannon has done uh, on Jet, but I, I mean, she she's extremely talented. Just like everyone is just either like, I guess, I guess what I'm trying to get at is they're just also talented. Yeah, like it's, it's, it's great because like we all come in with our own set of like our auditions and whatever we brought to the character. And then we have, you know, the director and the writer are usually in the room, too. And so they really help us, like, craft the whole thing mm -hmm. into, you know, like, and, you know, get us into the... Because we tried some some weirder stuff with Omen, some very kind of, like, tired, constantly hurt, things like that, you know, 
trying to keep himself together you know things like that and then eventually we were like no let's let's not that's a little too much <laughs> so we were just we just we just play mm. with stuff, try stuff out yeah um and things like that and just the fact that like the director and uh the, the writers are so you know game to like try stuff is fantastic and super like liberating as an actor because you know you get some directors who only want lines read exactly this way exactly that way exactly that way they don't let you kind of interpret dialogue your own mm -hmm. way or even try anything out so you know it's a little more transactional that way i guess but um yeah so i i i always appreciated the folks uh on valorant because they're everyone's just been super cool and everyone's been Mm -hmm. really really great to work with and i just adore the cast I, I hope that we all get to meet up someday when everything's safe again yeah i i always wonder if if you i mean you can tell me if this is correct but like when it comes to valorant um uh, as much of little information or whatever if you had to interpret but there is a sense of like i gotta get almost into this character like how is he thinking but there's also projects that you you maybe have done that is just pretty much kind of delivering lines like is it is it easier to like with a video game like valorant to to have like a picture and like dialogue between characters other than just like delivering lines on a piece of paper I mean, yeah, I, I, I don't really uh, try to, you know, like just do sort of just reading off of a sheet of yeah. paper on anything. But yeah. um, in, in that same kind of vein, you know, um, anime, which I do a lot of uh, mm. dubbing, English dubbing for anime, that is um, it's a little more like that, but it's definitely still performing. Yeah, yeah for but sure. It's, but there's, you know, since you have to do it in a certain amount of time to match lip flaps, there is a condensedness to the performance. I actually very frequently have to do a take two because I'm kind of performing with it a little too much. And they're like, okay, that's great, but we got to do it faster or we got to change the line so that it can fit within the, you know, lip flaps and stuff. So with something like Valorant, which is a little more broad, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, we get, we do get the chance to kind of, you know, act a little more and, you know, things. I always do the omen hands whenever I'm doing my own <laughs> stuff. I'm always doing the omen hands because um, <laughs> it's, ju it's just very character and he's always so, these claws are all too, you know. Uh. Um, <laughs> But I realize that as I'm doing this interview, I'm like, I'm constantly doing it. First, I'm going to punch my mic. And then I'm constantly just doing, like, omen hands. Um, but, yeah, th there's there's something to uh, – it's like with original animation, which is always fun, too. Um, as much as I love doing anime, you know, there is a, a certain condensedness to the performance uh, and what you can do because it has to fit in those lip flaps. Mm -hmm. um, but with original animation and video games and stuff, usually you don't have to do that you don't have to do anything to a specific unless it's you know an action scene that you're doing really slowly which you know then you need to pick up the pace but usually that it flows with you know you're, you're able to really perform uh and you know you and the director get to work together to really craft whatever is needed um mm -hmm. and you don't have to uh feel really stifled creatively or performance wise or anything like that so you know it, it depends yeah well i I didn't actually know for the longest time that because I'm not an anime watcher, mm -hmm. but I didn't know that there was like anim like English anime dubs, like and then when I when I would tell people like yeah this guy was in did you do like One Piece? No, I never did One Piece. And what, oh, um, I'd like to do One Piece. But what I don't know. what's what are some animes that you were in? Uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, uh, Megalobox, like I said, uh, Seven Deadly Sins, uh, uh, Hunter Hunter. Uh, yeah, I think Hunter Hunter is like, like a big, bigger one that I would know. Oh yeah, Hunter Hunter and JoJo's Bizarre Adventure are, are two really big ones that everybody seems to know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like, if for example, if I said that, they're like, the in I assume the English dub version. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Like I don't know what it means, <laughs> nah. but yeah, it's it's an interesting business. I enjoy doing anime, but it uh, it's it definitely comes with a, a just a different set of challenges sometimes. Yeah. So what what is that? Uh, you, you said the lip flap. So you you have to like line line it up. I would assume. Well, you usually at least have to do it timing wise. So if a character says you know, here is the line in Japanese, whatever. And then at the end, they have one more line where they, you know, there's a pause in there or whatever. So you have to uh, not match every single opening, like ba ba ba, but you do have to at least fit it within the time. 
get that pause in there, then pick up again where the line, you know, goes. So there's been, there's different ways of doing that. Usually they'll do the way it uh, starts off is you'll uh, be seated and, you know, get ready and everything. And then they will play it in Japanese for you. So you can kind of read it. What I do is I read along and then listen uh, to the timing and everything. So that I get that timing in there and then I get my, you know, performance and whatever is required from the visual. <clears throat> and then uh, they'll, play it without the uh, voice on it and they'll give you three beeps and on um, where the fourth beep would go so beep 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 then you start doing the line and then you you know and then they shift it around and match it up and fit it in there and you know usually it's good or you went a little long we have to have to change you know sometimes the line doesn't make sense or whatever so they have to change the line a little bit you know it's a little bit too literal a translation or because that's the other thing is you know you have to kind of localize the dialogue so that it doesn't sound stilted or weird or like too literal a translation yeah. so that it flows a little more naturally in, in English or any other language. So yeah, so it's it's interesting. It's uh it's a little more time consuming, I feel. Mm -hmm. Um and you know some sometimes it can be a little frustrating, but because uh some places do it <laughs> I call it karaoke style, but I'm sure I'm not the first one to call it that. Um <clears throat> where there will be like a little ribbon underneath the uh uh animation and it will have like the dialogue written where mm -hmm. you need to speak and everything and once they play it like there's this little red line that will start to highlight as the thing goes and the dialogue just tracks on behind it so it's like karaoke and you have to read the lines along and then stop where they stop and then start again where they start again so it's like karaoke and that i wasn't familiar with till i moved here to la so that was really strange for me i was not familiar with that at all that took me a little bit to <laughs> My director at that point was kind of like, they only scheduled you for an hour and you haven't done this before? I'm like, not this kind of anime. He's like, oh my God. So so that was really fun to, to learn how to do. But um, yeah, anime, uh, anime can be a trip, but really, really fun because I don't watch a lot of anime, so I never really know what the thing is when I go in. <laughs> and then it'll inevitably be something very strange or very scary or very cool. So I, I enjoy doing anime. All right, we'll we'll do a couple more voice lines and then I will let you go. Uh, but I do need to. I I do want to find some. Like. Uh, pretty, well known voice lines. Sure. That we yeah, feel free to toss me whatever you like, Dexter. I. Uh, do. Oh, split. Ah, they don't know the meaning of the word. Split. Ah, they don't know the meaning of the word. I like that one. I like that one, too. Him just being like, these poor children. Do, like, you, do you know what that means? Like, split? They don't know. Like, because it, it happens when you play the map split. Mm -hmm. That's what it's called. I don't know why. I don't know what. I don't, I always I, took that to I always took that to mean he's you know he's he's molecularly shadow whatever so like he's been ripped apart you know like that uh, line, how many times have I been torn apart how many times about you know whatever that line is um so I th I always took it to be like that like you think you guys are split you know like <laughs> I've been split apart you know okay. like right, you know whatever so that's how I always took that line um I feel the strain block it out omen. I feel the strain. Block it out, Omen. <laughs> yeah. Um, my burden never ends. My burden never ends. Okay, one. Kind of we'll do like two more. Sure. Uh, if I must live in this l nightmare, uh, my enemies might as well join me. If I must live in this nightmare, my enemies might as well join me. <laughs> <laughs> See, I always remember how it's uh, like, one yeah. side, with the exception of the skyline, apparently, but everything else, like I, I remember, which is a shame because I like sky, but here we are. I uh, also haven't really seen any of the playthroughs from the more recent patches, so I have no idea. Mm. I'm gonna have to look at it back because I like the new characters they brought in, KO and everything. Like, yeah, it looks really cool. I did. Me and Miranda did a. I did a stream with her on her channel, and I oh. I like played Valorant for her, and I played Sky, and then she would like say the lines as like oh that's have. fantastic it was so good it was so oh, good oh that's awesome i didn't uh, know she did she have a twitch stream or something yeah 
Yeah. Okay. You'll have to send. Is yours texture? Because I want to follow yours for sure. Uh, yeah. It's like my Instagram name, like T E X T V R E S. You know. Perfect. Picking right. a common word and trying to get a uh at on social media mm -hmm. is terrible. Oh yeah, I'm sure. But I will do it, and I will follow you. <laughs> You'll never know. Okay, one for me. Uh, can you say like texture? I survived obliteration. I will survive them. Texture. I survived obliteration. I will survive them. Uh, <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much again and again. Uh, you are incredibly oh, talented. And uh, I... Uh, you've been a delight. Thank you for, thank you for kind of <laughs> this very conversational thing. This has been a lot yeah. of fun. Yeah, I I used to come in with like a lot of questions and like try to hit every point, but mm -hmm. when I did I did uh, raise uh, Carolina the other day or like a couple oh, weeks she's ago. A she's yeah, so good. I the, love her. The best, the best. And I yeah. I went in with nothing other than like seeing what she did and stuff like that other stuff, but it just felt way more natural and I I just genuinely enjoyed picking your brain and and hearing your thoughts. So I appreciate it. Uh, it's been my pleasure, my friend. Absolute pleasure. Okay, thank you guys for watching the podcast. Uh, I will have everything that uh, Jason's on in the description. Uh, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.